I'm going to warn you, there might be a little bit of a rant here. We are still locked down here in southern Appalachia. I've mentioned this many times before. This may be the first video you see of us, so I'll say it again. My whole family actually is from southern Appalachia. Spent many decades in Detroit, moved back down to southern Appalachia. We are locked down by a snowstorm. At first I thought, well, you know, it's the south, right? I'm sorry, but you're not going to have a ton of infrastructure for plowing and for salt and for all of that. Uh, I know some people. I'll just put it that way. I ain't naming cities. I ain't naming towns, but I know some people. And uh, turns out that's not the case. Uh, I've never seen a worse job. And they can get on the news and say, our crews are out there and they're, they're working hard. No, they're not. I've never seen a worse job by cities at clearing roads. Anytime there's a snow, see, you're in the rant. You're in the rant. Sorry, but you're in the rant. I know this is about investing, trading, and all of that GTC traders, but you're in the rant now. It's not necessarily a holy gospel hour for those of you that know that I can go into one of those when I rant, but it's not one of those. But when it comes to a snowstorm, you got to get ahead of the power curve, right? So generally, about 30 minutes before the snow storm starts, any city, any municipality, any county wants all of the roads treated. Every road's got to be touched and treated. And then the storm's coming, and it's about staying ahead enough of the power curve and not getting swamped by it, not getting surpassed, such that by the time the storm's sort of tapering off, you should be a little bit behind. And then it's about plowing to catch back up, treating again, right? That's, that's the formula. Anybody that's spent any time in the North knows that. Well, generally, since it's so infrequent, it turns out they do have the equipment. They do have the supplies. There is a bit of a shortage, but they do have them. And the whole general theory is, well, this just doesn't happen very often. So there was no pre very, very, very little pretreatment of the roads. I mean, obviously, you know, federal freeways are taken care of, but very little treatment other than one or two main arteries. Past that, you're all on your own. And then the power curve just swamps you. So what's happened is we had the freezing temperatures, we had the snowstorm that all got packed down of people trying to get, you know, to stores or to food or gas in their car or whatever. It gets packed down, came up a little bit, and now we've had the worst scenario, which is basically it warms up just a little bit for a soft rain, which basically goes on all of that hard packed snow, turns it into a sheet of ice, and now we have dropping temperatures. So Basically, everywhere right now is a hockey rink. It didn't have to happen. I, as you might be able to tell, am going a little bit stir-crazy getting locked in the house for this long. Thankfully, it'll be over by next week when temperatures get back up to 55 or so Fahrenheit. Uh, but it just seems like, guess what? Um, you're just sort of just hanging up until then, right? So... Yeah, I'm just a little bit torqued because I and I've talked with people. It's like, no, they had the supplies. They could have mixed salt with brine. The little that they had left, uh, a lot of crews just didn't want to go out. From what I'm hearing, and and from people that work there, it's like, nah, we we we'll just goof off at work. So yeah, the rest of us are screwed. Going stir crazy in our houses. What's this about again? <laughs> Good day, everyone. Rant aside, today is January the 19th, 2024. And I wanted to sort of continue the stream of consciousness when it comes to trading platforms. And I had mentioned in sort of the previous video in the series, it's like, okay, I think it's time for maybe maybe semi-retirement for Thinkorswim. I mentioned the reasons in that video entry. The middleware on the platform is getting very old. It's something like, I don't know. I don't know how the middleware has been updated or if it has, but the entire platform was designed like 25 years ago. It took Tom and Scott like 12 years to get, maybe 10 years, I don't know, to get Thinkorswim to what we know of as Thinkorswim today. 
right? So what we know of Thinkorswim, it took Tom and Scott about 10 or 12 years, I think. Then it got sold, and it's been sold again. So in the middleware is just old. And I mentioned there was a couple of platforms that I've been looking at. And mind you, I, I collect platforms like you wouldn't believe. I've probably got I don't know, 10 or so. I, it's ridiculous the number of platforms I have on my system. I definitely believe in spreading my assets out. Regardless, I have some of the assets here, and some of the assets are in other firms. I just believe in that, so I seem to have collected platforms. So you might see this platform from time to time, sort of semi-retirement. Uh, I mentioned in the last video entry, and I'll mention it here, I have a little bit of brand confusion going on because they've changed the name a couple of times. Tasty Trade. Tasty Trade is the name of the actual platform. Cannot recommend it enough, right? So Thinkorswim got sold off a number of times. Well, Tom and Scott started, and I don't know which it is. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, and I have no affiliate relationship with anybody I'm going to mention here. I'm just going through platforms, okay? So some platforms and some I was wrong about. But uh, was it Tasty Works or Tasty Live or I, I don't know. But it's Tasty. Tasty Trade is the name of the platform. You search for that and you'll find it. Cannot recommend them enough. So what they are doing with Tasty Trade, as far as I've been able to determine, is the middleware is obviously much faster and it's all built on speed of execution, but they're improving it bit by bit, just like they did with Thinkorswim. As I said, it took Thinkorswim, what we see when we see the Thinkorswim platform, it took about I want to say about 12 years of constant improvement on the platform to get it to where what we know of as Thinkorswim for mixed assets like, you know, futures and and currencies and equities and derivatives, right? It got about 12 years to get there. Just small little improvements. And what Thinkorswim initially looked like and what it ended up looking like are two totally different things. Well, getting back to Tasty Trade, Tom and Scott are doing that with Tasty Trade. They're doing just little improvement by little improvement by little improvement by little improvement. I've been with them enough, but what I really cannot emphasize enough is not only are the same guys that brought you Thinkorswim and will get Tasty Trade improves and improves and improves as the years go by, but their customer service cannot be touched. You would not believe if I told you the horror stories of encounters at various firms. I'm just going to stop there. Wes Craven horror stories. Tasty Trades customer service cannot be touched. It can't even be approached. You show me another multiple asset firm like, you know what, they got the micros, they got uh, equities, they've got options, derivatives, futures, my, you name it, they've got it, right? You show me another, heck, forget that, show me another derivative firm, anybody, where you can call the CEO and talk to the CEO. I have, and I'm not special. This isn't a, hey, I know. Everybody can. They, they treat a guy with $12 million the same as they treat you if you've got $50. So that is why, and again, I have no affiliate relationship with them. I cannot recommend Tasty Trade enough, period. I know I've talked with Tom. I've talked with other guys at Tasty Trade. You can't do that with other firms. And, 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 and it's not just the accessibility, it's the speed with which, as a matter of fact, I had an issue come up, right? Across many, at, across many platforms and, and clearers that I have relationships with, and I had to contact all of them on an issue. Here's, a, here's one little example for you on the customer service for Tasty Trade. And I turned to somebody and I said, now you watch. Tasty Trade will not only have me the answer, have the issue addressed, they will have the resolution before any of these other jokers that I have even get back with me. And I was right. It was The response was immediate. Uh, they had a resolution for me. We worked through it. We got it done. And about that time, I was getting responses from the other firms. So I cannot recommend Tasty Trade enough. Uh, the middleware, as I understand it, is all built on the speed of execution, as many of these platforms like TT and CQG and you know, the rest of them are doing, is where it's it's everything's more web-based and just getting those the speed down to, like, I've even heard rumors of, like, 10 mics. I've just, just ridiculous speed. So it's all built on the speed of the platform, right? So I cannot recommend them enough. Now, there was another platform, and you may have seen this chart. 
So you may have seen this chart here. Uh, I have it rather simplistically set. I have said this before. I don't want anybody to think I went out and got a Bloomberg platform. As a matter of fact, of the more expensive platforms, which I'm going to talk about here and my thoughts on those, uh, I would not get a Bloomberg platform as unbelievable as far as data uh, and compiling data and cross-referencing data as it is. I would not get a Bloomberg platform. And this is not a Bloomberg platform, and I don't want anybody to think that. I just like very simplistic, clean looks at, at, at a chart. Right. So what is this, you ask? Let me blow it up. And I'm going to say I was this is a platform. All right. Just just everybody listen. I was wrong. Yes. As you can see now, it is trading view. Well, what do you mean you were wrong? Well, those who know me in my previous sort of public iterations that I didn't I said I didn't like it. I don't like it. Uh, I, I I really didn't have enough bad things to say about it. I, I, I was just I was just finding, uh, let me put it this way, I was finding more and more bad things to say about it. Well, why? What was my initial objection? My initial objection, there is a cogn something called a cognitive bias, right? Or not a cognitive bias. We all suffer from cognitive biases. In other words, just the way we got to survive in the world, we have biases to, to, that we're susceptible to, okay? Just trying to find a way to phrase this. One of those biases is something called apophenia. And this is something that a lot of new traders, so if you're a new trader or if you're an aspiring trader, you may want to listen up to this with an open mind. I'm just telling you because I've seen, I've seen people fall into this trap. Apophenia is seeing patterns in random data. You can look this up. This is not a Dan term. This is not a Dan invention. It's a very well-known cognitive bias seeing puppy dogs in clouds, right? Seeing castles and, hey, that's an alligator. Well, why do we do that? Because our brain is wired in such a way so as to recognize patterns. And it serves us quite well and has served us quite well for many eons of time. Whoa, I've, I've seen this before. This is dangerous. Let me avoid this pattern, right? Well, the problem with it is that then you start to see random data and you're brain, your mind, my mind is so bent on finding a pattern that we simply find one, regardless of whether or not it's there. It is referred to as apophenia, and it's very dangerous. And getting back to this platform, I said, I didn't like the way I saw this platform, and I felt, I'm going to say, I was wrong. Now I feel I'm wrong. And as you see, this is a premium, the, their premium version, TradingView's premium version, of their platform. I was wrong about the data. Well, what am I talking about? Well, here, I'm going to pull up just a plain chart here in TradingView, right? And what you will see new traders do is they go to the, well, I, you should be able to trade off of this, right? I, I'm seeing literal trades right off of this chart. Heck, you could even you could even get rid of this. Just off of this, if you know the principles of trading and what we've sort of been talking about in the one series that we're doing in the text entries, we're going to have a podcast on that as well. But if you know what the principles of trading, you can trade off of just this, period. Unfortunately, people come in, they're new. I don't really know what I'm doing. How am I supposed to look at this? And there are far too many other guys that don't know what they're doing willing to say, well, you need an indicator. I do bag on technical analysis. I don't bag on technical overlays. That's a whole other subject. I'm going to try not to go down this giant rabbit hole because I could talk for about eight hours on that about how the difference between a technical overlay and technical analysis. Technical analysis, I bag on. And please, if you're one of these newbie guys that is suffering from Dunning-Kruger, don't come at me with, you just got to learn technical analysis, bro. Uh, you, you just got to learn it, and then you'll know where the market's going. Dude, I've seen more technical setups and forgot about them than you've probably learned in however many years you've been doing this. I've forgotten that many. So don't come at me with you. you got to learn technical analysis. See, I'm going down a rabbit hole. I'm going down a rabbit hole, but I'm, and I'm trying not to. My problem is people see squiggly lines on a page, and they don't know the mathematical formula. I just saw somebody do it yesterday. They were using an oscillator, right, which by definition has a look-back period built into the mathematical formula the way it's constructed, and they were talking about something that happened 10 years ago. It's like, really? <laughs> if, you can, if you look at the divergence between, it's like, dude, you may want to look at the underlying mathematical formula of what that's doing before you come to a conclusion. See, again, I'm going down the rabbit hole. 
Let me back up. You should be able to trade off of just this, but it's far too many guys out there. Click on that little, oh, I got to click on that indicator tab. I got to click on it. I got to click on it. Oh, doesn't that feel better? And they would just add. I don't even know what these are. I really, I seriously, I've got one star because that one is important. See, there's a difference between technical overlay and technical analysis. There's, there are tools that are useful, very useful, uh, to look at data. Uh, I don't know. Let's add that. Let's, and 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 I would look at these charts that these guys had, and oh, I'm telling you, uh, let's just. And, and this is what it literally looked like they were doing. Oh, there's one in here that I think is hilarious. Where is it? Ultimate. Let's have the ultimate oscillator, right? And then. That's not enough. <laughs> what's what's some more we can add on here, you know? And they'll come at me, with, and I know there are memes on this, but it literally is the truth, and I have seen this where people come at me, and it's like, well, you've got what, uh, sort of one, two things there. They're measuring the exact same thing, so I don't know why you have two different tools. Uh, I and by the way, the, the my biggest question is, where's the price action? Because I, I I can't even see it anymore. Regardless. Back to the clean because that's what I prefer. Anyway, <laughs> right? I, I just didn't like that. And please don't just, I'm, I'm telling you, don't come at me with this technical analysis bullcrap because that's all it is, is bullcrap. I have forgotten more about complexity mathematics and probability clouds on Bayesian probabilities going two or three splines out than, again, you've probably ever learned about. So don't come at me with your technical analysis predicts the future baloney. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, that's that was my problem with it. And that's all I saw do, people doing is playing with charts. I will say when it comes to TradingView as a platform, maybe it maybe it's that whole idea, right? Don't blame the tool when people misuse the tool. I've, as you can see, I have a premium version. I've come to appreciate TradingView. I'm a big man. I can say I was wrong. So I'm not going to go through any sort of an analysis of Disney here. Well, why are you wrong? Like, what, what do you feel now about TradingView? Why do you feel it's a good platform? Well, again, I like to keep things simplistic. I can. But if that was all it was, then why are you using TradingView? And why are you using a premium inversion? Why shouldn't you just, like, do it something for free? Or one of the other platforms you got. Why get TradingView? That doesn't make any sense. And I would say you would be right. It's not about the charts, though. I've got many tabs open uh, there's economic data i don't even know what i was looking at but you can pull up a host of economic data right yeah just ridiculous amount of economic data that you can look at if we were to look at something like disney my personal belief is disney <sighs> disney's in trouble honestly uh and disney has been in trouble for a long time uh it is not doing well as a company so that is why I like TradingView, is because you can pull that all up in one spot, and I don't have to go hunting in several different directions for it. So again, not a particular analysis of Disney. I'm just trying to show you what TradingView is capable of to some extent. So you can pull up the fundamentals of Disney if you want to, and there's a lot of data there. Uh, you know, statements, I always like looking at income and balance sheet and cash flow statements. That's sort of my thing. That's what I like to do. Uh, what was their um, income? Their income is gone up, and their profit margins have gone down. That was one of many little things I saw that I really didn't like. Uh, you can look at well various key statistics, right? I'm sure if we go down here, we can see. And this is this set to the annual. Yeah, I'm sure if you set it to the annual, you'll see their yeah, gross margins are, are down from, this is 2017, 40 to 39, 33, 24, 25, 28, 27. There's just a lot of a lot with Disney cash flow statements I just saw as a problem. But my point is you, you've got it all here. News, you can filter news. Uh, you can do look at things like not even Disney on equities. You can look at uh, crude oil term, right? You can look at the forward curve on crude oil. There's just a lot here that's not a chart that's actual real data that you can look at. Let me pull over the chart here. The blue is Disney, the orange is like their nearest competitor, and the cyan is the broader market, right, compared. Now, by the way, speaking of apophenia and looking at data, 
I'm a firm believer that new folks, you need to learn about chart cheating. If you're new, you need to learn about chart cheating. What is chart cheating? I'll give you an example. I was watching a lecture not too long ago. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't, I'll give the person giving the lecture some credit. It wasn't that bad, but they had some charts. And of course I was mumbling things under my breath to the person next to me because it's like I could do one thing with that chart and ruin their entire thesis. And they had a problem with the way they were using the chart, right? So what am I talking about? Learn about chart cheating. I'm not going to have a whole entry here because I'm trying to go over platforms. But, you know, you can compare different symbols very, very easily in TradingView as a platform. Another reason why I believe Disney's in trouble, right? And it's been in trouble for some time. Can they turn it around? We'll see. Uh, speaking of chart cheating, there's a thing with the axis, right? Some people will create a chart like this and they'll set it to the perfect, the exact perfect axis, to prove their thesis there's some other problems with it as well you can do but i, I just focus on that one aspect right but if you change the axis the problem remains right sorry don't, don't care what time axis you look at and i'm talking about time to the performance the problem remains if we're going back to june of last year if we're going back to march of last year it, the problem remains right so not only has disney been getting crushed by the broader market uh but you know, by its competitors as well. And normally, in some cases, you could say, well, great, that's a wonderful spread or pairs opportunity, pairs trade, right? Is buy Disney and, and sell this other asset. Well, that's why you can look at other data. That may be why you want to look at other data so that you don't get caught in a trap like that on a pairs trade where you're thinking, well, I'm going to buy the one and sell the other. And it's various key locations that can help. But, it, you know, are you getting involved in a value trap there? Well, you know, there's a lot of data here to look. So quite honestly, I have no problem saying it. When I feel I'm wrong, I will say I'm wrong. And with TradingView, I was wrong. When I when I bagged on it, my previous iteration, again, I have no affiliation with TradingView other than being a customer. Um, that's a way many people are going. And it's a good option, I think. And I'll tell you another reason why it's a good option. This comes to my third point. Sometimes guys have developed themselves as a trader. And they want to sort of step it up a bit. Well, I like the deals. I like the, the business arrangements that TradingView has set up. Well, what am I talking about there? I said earlier that I would not get a Bloomberg setup. Well, why wouldn't I get a Bloomberg setup? Quite frankly, I would not get Bloomberg set up because I would, I've always been more preferential to something like Icon. Okay, so if you're not aware, Icon could be considered Bloomberg's next, next closest competitor. Now, some people do not have the money, the $23,000, right, when we're talking about more high-end platforms and research to, to blow on something like a full-blown Icon. You know, Tom, it used to be Thomson Reuters. I think they sold it. But billions spent on development of it as a platform and pretty much can cross-reference any piece of data that you possibly want. You can look at the debt term structures of some of these companies. And again, I say this because some people are really wanting to step up their game, right? They, they've done very well in trading and they've been at it three or four years, which I think if you're doing well in trading after three or four years, then you're doing very well because some people it takes a lot longer to get the handle of it. It's a skill you have to learn. It's not something you can just turn on like, I'm going to be a trader today. I saw people, you know, we all saw people do that during the shutdowns and it didn't work out so well for them, right? Why didn't it work out? That's like showing up at a jujitsu gym and saying, I'm going to be a purple belt today. It's like, Good luck with all that. <laughs> Not going to work out too well for you, right? It's the same with trading. It's a skill-based endeavor. You have to develop the skill. So, But some people have developed the skill and they've been doing well. And it's like, I want to step up my game, right? Well, maybe what you want is something like a dedicated research terminal. You don't have the $23,000 yet to pour into something like a full-blown Icon terminal or Bloomberg terminal, for that matter. So what's your option? This would be the last thing I think people should look at is this one right here. It is an Icon product that's been sort of stripped out a bit and very, very affordable for newer traders and it's been stripped out a bit, right? So you don't have all of the things that, as it says right here on their Metastock's own page, uh, you know, it's an icon product. So it doesn't have everything that you would get with the full $23,000, it's stripped out, but a ridiculous, and you can go do your own reading. People have reviewed this. Once they get into it, they're like, oh my God, I love this thing. <laughs> Just 
I know I know several actually, not just one, but I know several people who are like, uh, now that I got it and I've gotten into it, I am in love with it and I could not see doing business without it. So you want to look at term structure, right? Kroger, how do I know? How did I know that Kroger had pers- pushed out all of their debt to like 2044? You know, you can find that sort of information in Metastocks um, Zenith, which is an icon product, right? So it's stripped out version of it. And uh, not only that, I have, again, no affiliation. I'm not getting any sort of affiliate thing for this whatsoever, for nothing I've mentioned or mentioning. If you go to YouTube and you go to, we are friends with Discovery Trading Group. I'm not getting anything for saying this, okay? But if you go to Discovery Trading Group, go to their videos, they go over a bit how to use it. And if you go to one of these videos, let me see here, they can walk you through some of the uh, the features of Zenith. And as well, they have a link where you can save a bit of money. So you're not going to, I can't remember, since I have no relationship, it doesn't really matter if I screw this up, what I think the deal is. Uh, I think the deal is something like for three months, you pay one month or something like that. And then it, you know, reverts obviously back to normal, but it's a good deal. Very, very good deal. So if you're thinking about stepping up your game, the last platform I would say you really, really, really need to take a serious look at is Metastock's Zenith for a lot of data. Uh, that is very hard to find in other places, and it just puts it all boom, you know, wham bam in one shop, and it's very affordable as well. So that's sort of a look over at platforms. It's sort of been just what it always is, just our thoughts. I have no affiliate relationships, yeah, at the time of this recording with any of these folks. Uh, I'm just telling you what I think. It's just my stream of consciousness when it comes to platforms. And it's GTC, right? It's just good until it's canceled because that's what we are. We're GTC traders. We adapt. We change. And this has been what it's always been. It's simply been our thoughts, not yours, for whatever the heck day it is. As always, stay safe, trade well, and remember that love doesn't cost a dime.